Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. Today, I want to cook a classic Italian dish, spaghetti a la carbonara. Carbonara gets its name from the word carbon, which supposedly is for the people who would deliver charcoal at that time, just like spaghetti alla puttanesca is named after the ladies who would deliver the goods. Anyways, one of the reasons why I want to make this dish is because we made carbonara in an Italian cooking course that I took. And I know carbonara uses egg yolks. That's the primary ingredient for the sauce that you use in carbonara. And we didn't use any eggs in this carbonara we made in cooking class and that just didn't make any sense to me so I want to do this again so this is going to be a classic spaghetti a la carbonara so let's get into the ingredients I'm going to be using from my ingredients I'm going to give you the most basic ingredients for making a spaghetti carbonara and then I'm going to get into some of the optional ingredients that I'm going to be using and some that I'm not going to be using First of all, you're going to need one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, five ounces, which is about 140 grams of pancetta, diced, two eggs plus two egg yolks, one pound, 450 grams of spaghetti, one quarter cup each, which is about 30 grams each, of Parmesan cheese and Romano cheese, grated, and you'll have extra for garnish at the table. And then optionally, I'm going to be using one quarter cup about 60 milliliters of heavy cream to make more of my sauce. You can use if you want four ounces 115 grams of peas fresh or frozen that you would cook in advance a little bit. I'm not going to be using peas in this dish. Because my pancetta is so sliced paper thin and I can't buy it as one solid piece here in the USA at least not in the stores that we have locally I'm going to use three ounces 85 grams of pancetta and then I'm going to be using three ounces, 85 grams again, of prosciutto. Then I'm going to be dicing this up. That'll give me a little bit more of a meaty texture to my carbonara. And of course, salt and freshly ground black pepper to taste. This is my homemade pasta dough. At last night I made pasta dough. I thought I could make this rather than using spaghetti. I like working with fresh pasta dough on the website. There is a recipe and a video for making pasta from scratch, but you could use store-bought dry spaghetti and just cook it according to package directions. So those are the ingredients I'm using for my spaghetti carbonara. I diced up my pancetta, and as you can see that is awful flaky because it was just sliced paper thin in the package. So this is my prosciutto. I cut these into long strips like fairly large julienne and I'm just cutting crosswise to cut these into little cubes about a quarter of an inch. What's that? About a little more than half a centimeter. And these chunks will give me a little bit better texture to my carbonara. I've got a skillet heating over medium-high heat. I put my tablespoon or so of my extra virgin olive oil in there. I'm going to put my pancetta in there first. And I want to cook this until this gets up to or comes to about a, a brown crisp stage. I don't need to brown the um, prosciutto, but I will be adding that toward the, the end. To get this nicely brown is going to take about five to six minutes. My pancetta is now lightly browned. I'm going to add my diced prosciutto and then just cook this for about one minute more just to lightly brown that prosciutto a little bit. And then we'll be ready to start working on the sauce. To do my egg yolks, I have some water lightly simmering here in a pan. I'm going to put a bowl on top. And I'm going to put my egg yolks inside. And start heating these up. 
Some people are nervous about, I might as well put my cream in there as well. Some people are nervous about working with raw eggs because there is a risk of salmonella, which there is a risk. In 2002, the U.S. Department of Agriculture did a study and found that there is salmonella in one out of every 30,000 eggs. Okay, so the risk is low, but the risk is there. You actually run a higher risk just by handling the eggshells. There can be salmonella infection actually on salmonella bacteria on the surface of the eggshell. So it's a good idea when you handle eggs to wash your hands. To make sure your eggs are safe, bring the egg yolks up to about 140 degrees. And there they are. Okay, so by bringing this temperature up to 140, you're killing the bacteria. And now stir the egg whites in. That'll immediately cool it down again. If you have this up above 150, things cook. So you don't want scrambled eggs. You just want to get your eggs heated up to the point where you kill any bacteria. At 140 degrees, you've done that. By adding my egg whites, I bring the temperature back down again, and now I'm going to let these cool. That's the sauce for my carbonara. I'm ready now to start combining my sauce ingredients. This has had a chance to cool down a little bit more, this egg mixture. You don't want to put the cheese in when it's too hot because then the cheese will melt and become stringy. So there's my cooked meat and my mixture of Romano and Parmesan cheese. I'm not going to add pepper just yet because I'm going to garnish it with pepper before it goes on the table. This doesn't have as, as much contrast to it as I would like. Pepper will give it some contrast on the surface. But I am going to taste this for salt. Needs a little bit of salt, maybe no more than like a quarter teaspoon. The cheese and the uh, meat, the cured meats, have so much salt in them that that's going to provide most of the salt. All right, so there is my sauce. The next step is to work on my pasta. I've got water heating on the stove. I've been working my pasta here to get it down to a nice sheet that will go through my pasta machine. Now switch over to my spaghetti cutter. Okay, I'm going to cut those in half, and those are my spaghettis. Beautiful. Okay, so as soon as my water comes up to the boil, I'll be ready to put this in the boiling water. Again, you can use store-bought dry pasta. That'll cook in like 12 minutes. This is going to cook in about three minutes. So there's my hot pan. I'm just draining my pasta now. I don't have a lot of pasta here because I didn't make up a lot. I'm going to put in only some of this sauce. And I'll save the rest for later. Alright, how I would plate this now, just put plenty in a bowl, maybe a little bit more. Like so. And this is the point at which I would grate some black pepper on there, simply because this doesn't have a lot of contrast in it. It kind of strikes me as having a flat color. So grate a little bit of black pepper on it for some dark speckles and then maybe garnish it with a little bit of 
your Parmesan Romano cheese. Like so. Okay, and the last step, of course, is to see how good this tastes. Oh, I'm so looking forward to tasting this real spaghetti alla carbonara rather than that stuff we made in Italian cooking class. <laughs> Looks delicious. Oh wow, that is good. Yeah, the meat is there, but not strong. It's just perfect. Everything is perfect in this. So this is spaghetti a la carbonara. I hope you have a chance to make this. As for me, I'm going to en go enjoy my lunch. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive. Where's the fire? As I was saying, if